Most of this segment has been on Monopoly, just one firm in the market with complete market power. In the past, I, get, I did some videos on competition where we had perfect competition, which meant that profits were driven to zero. In this video, I would like to introduce you to an intermediate case. The intermediate case is called Corno competition. Firms that are in Corno competition maximize profits. Now, what we did with the Monopoly case was we looked at this price and we said that price isn't fixed. It actually is a, an inverse demand curve and producing more output means that you get a lower price. We'll do the same thing here with the Corno competition, except for what we're going to do is we're going to make a distinction between the quantity that goes into this inverse demand and the quantity that the firm can pick. In particular, we're going to think of the quantity that goes into the inverse demand curve as the market quantity, and the quantity that is out here is going to be the quantity that the firm actually produces, because that's actually what this firm can profit from. So let's take an example of a linear demand curve, where we have two firms and constant marginal costs. So as we can see, the big Q is going to be the sum of the individual quantities of each of the firms. I've labeled the quantities Q1 and Q2 for firm 1 and firm 2. Now each firm is going to have constant marginal costs of $4 per unit. Um, and so the total cost, and there will be no fixed cost, so the total cost is going to be 4 times Q. And the inverse demand curve is given by this. So what we can do is then just take this example and plug it into this general framework uh, to get the profit function that the, the Corno competitor is maximizing. So let's just look at the profit function for firm one. So firm one has a profit function that looks like this. And we know from very basic calculus that if we take the derivative with respect to quantity that the firm one can pick, set that equal to zero, then what we will get is we'll get their profit maximizing quantity. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I've done here um, for the non-calculus folks out there is I've taken the derivative in a way that has an interpretation. The left-hand side is going to be the marginal revenue for the firm, and the right-hand side is going to be the marginal cost. And so what you can see is that this is the derivative of the cost function, this is the derivative of the revenue function, and what's different about Corno competition from the monopoly is that Corno competition, the marginal revenue, depends on the other firm's quantity. So what we need to do is then solve this for Q1, and what this will be called is a best response function. It's this firm's best response to what the other firm's quantity choice is. So in the first line here, I subtracted 4 from both sides to get 6, and I added 2Q1 to both sides. And then in the second line, I divided both sides by 2 to get the solution for Q1. And this is the best response function for Q1. Similarly, if we did this problem exactly the same for firm 2, we would get a best response function for firm 2. And it would look identically, except for we switched the roles of Q1 and Q2. So now what we have with these two best response functions is a system of two equations and two unknowns. And we can solve this system of equations and find out what the quantity, what the equilibrium quantity is going to be. So I go ahead and substitute in. I distribute and collect terms. I bring the Q1s together, invert and multiply. And so what we see is that the quantity that these Cournot competitors produce is a quantity of two. And so we can plug back into the profit function and figure out what exactly the profits are going to be. But what I want to do at this point is now contrast this with the case of perfect competition and with the case of monopoly to see where this Cournot competition lands in the scheme of things. So what we've concluded is that under Cournot competition, each firm, when there are two firms, produces two, and the industry quantity is four. Now let's think about what perfect competition would look like in this set. Now first things first, marginal cost equals 4. If marginal cost equals 4, um, and what we remember from way back when we talked about perfect competition, price equals marginal cost. Recall that the inverse demand curve is 10 minus Q. Set that price equal to 4. 
and solve for Q. And so what we see is that there's a total quantity of six for this industry, and so perfect competition means that each firm produces three. Now, what does a monopoly do in this setting? So remember our marginal cost is equal to four, and the monopoly has a marginal revenue equal to the same intercept but twice the slope of the demand curve. And monopoly picks its quantity by setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Now we can go ahead and solve this for Q, and what we'll see is that the monopoly will produce three units of output here. And if this monopoly, if these, if these two firms got together and acted like a monopoly, what is called a cartel, then what each firm would produce is 1.5 units of output for a total of Q equal 3. And so you can see from this example that Corno competition falls somewhere between the perfect competition and monopoly. This is a very useful and widely used model of competition when we think that the firms are competing with one another imperfectly but have some degree of market power.